Hello and welcome everybody. Today we are going to do how to return like a pro with Miguel. He's back. Hi, I'm back, baby. Ooh, I'm going to start right now. Vamos. Vamos. Yeah. <laughs> Sigue. Oh, booty. You like it? You like it? Good yeah. match. What is it like to return like a pro? One, you never make a mistake. Pressure on easy serves. Uh. Take over the net with one simple lob return. Change the speed of the ball. Play it so your opponent gets a low ball. What kind of technique do I need in order to have a good return? And we're going to start actually with positioning because if you have the correct position, the technique is easier. So what is a good position? I think this is nice. Miguel likes to return from here. So I think one big step behind the, or for Miguel, a uh, big step behind the service six, line. Six. <laughs> six steps be behind the service line for Miguel. <laughs> so he can do the sidewall return and he, the middle is a little bit open. I think I'm further back. When I'm returning, I'm further away from the, from the service line because I have a little bit more time to get the, the body serves away. And with my glass return, it's also quite easy. I might be a little bit more vulnerable to get the ball from the middle. So I can change my position depending on the personal preference of my opponent where he likes to serve towards. So if he likes to serve more to the middle, I might need to go a little bit more towards the middle in order to get the ball there. It's also important to know where your opponent is serving from. And if players are serving from the left side, it is easier to play the ball in the center. And what Miguel was saying in Dutch, so we cannot use it, uh, that if you are right-handed and you serve from the right, you cannot play so good in the middle. And if you do side spin, the ball will also go more towards the player that is returning. So. If the player is left-handed, maybe you need to go slightly more to the middle because the angle is easy to make. For every return, we want the racket to prepare very early and we also want that the preparation is quite low because the serve maybe has a lot of slice. So the pro return has to be a very low preparation. What uh, Miguel was saying, if he has a lot of time, he plays with topspin from the side wall or without the side wall or without the glass. From the back wall, we sh don't recommend to play with topspin because the ball is coming from high to low. If the server plays a very fast shot, it's better to play flat from the side wall and maybe even flat from without the glass. So let's start with preparing early, what it looks like to prepare early and what it looks like to prepare low and quite small. So if your preparation is quite low, you're able to play soft on the feet, but you can also play the lob from the same preparation, which is very important to camouflate. Nice. So I would never do like a slice Return because then the ball will be quite high. So I always try to play with top spin if I have time. This one, yes. What I personally like to do is to take it quite fast after the glass. This is my favorite shot. Like a half volley. Like this. Because my opponent does not have any time to respond if I take it quite soon after. So if the ball is quite short on the glass, so close to the fence, I use the glass and I try to play the lob if it's slow. So now I have a lot of time to play a nice lob. If it's fast, I try to take it straight away because it's too difficult to lob. And if it's a demo match, I try to do it like this. And if it's going to be deeper, so from the surface line to, towards the second part, I try to take it before the wall. 
This one was going to die. If I leave it, it's behind me. I don't want that. So my general rule in how I return is to stand your ground. I will always stand my ground. Only when it's slower, I let it come and I lop. So I always try to have a neutral stand. So I'm not there, I'm more neutral. Yeah, so it's always neutral. Maybe slightly to the front, but not too much. Because if you're too much, you're gonna be there. This is my common mistake, is that I'm lazy and I play it open. So what I really need to focus on for me is that I am trying to be here, so the ball is end up being lower. So my left foot should aim to the net. I am sometimes lazy and I play it well, floppy. <laughs> so if you have time, you can do it like this. I think you can play a better ball, but also takes longer to get back to your own corner. So these are the things, if you play open, you can go back earlier. And if you are here, it takes slightly longer because you cannot take that foot here, back to the corner. So if, if you play in open stance, you can play a little bit faster because it's easier to get back. If you play straight stance, it's better to play slower because it takes more time to get back. So your favorite footwork is okay, but try to use the correct speed depending on how you want to play. So with the return, I like to use the glass a lot because I can slow down the game. So if it's slightly faster, oh, then you should take it before the glass. So a faster one, like you can play quite slow with that one. I would not play the lob here because, oh, that was not a bad one, but if it's so low and the player is already back, they can do a very good smash or bandeja. So I'd rather play a lob before the service glass or I play low when it's here. If it's a super easy serve, then I have time to do it like this. No. <laughs> Uh, if it's super easy, then of course you can play the lob. So if you can play the lob, do it because your opponents are, need to play from here instead of they can volley from closer to the net. So you rather want your opponents to be further away. It all depends if it's a first or a second serve, in my opinion. So if somebody plays a very fast serve, it is quite difficult to play the lob. So if somebody serves fast, I'd rather play down. If somebody plays like a second serve or a slower serve or a very bouncy serve from the glass, always play the lob so you can take over the net. So this was easier. I could take over the net quite fast because Miguel didn't have an angle. If I play on his back end, I might be in trouble. Yes, he can play there. And he can also play to the corner or to the fence. Yeah, you can make an angle toward the door. <laughs> oh yeah, then I'm still in trouble. If it's in the center, I also be, want to be careful with this because I'm further, I have to run and then I'm gone. So if it's in the center, I really want that Miguel gets a forehand, so I can get back. Oh, so difficult this angle. Yeah, so he can pressure my partner as well. He has all the options in the world. So we prefer to not give Miguel any angle. So on the right side, you want to be very careful with playing to the forehand. You want to play to the backhand. I can pressure straight away if the ball comes to my forehand. I cannot do any, and he can do everything. So this is the perfect one in the body. So what is important, I think, that you play a return so this player doesn't get a forehand. Yeah. So what many players struggle with is that this player never gets the backhand, but the player on the left side poaches it and plays to your corner. Yeah. How do you solve that? I, I usually play the ball down the line. So if it comes close to the wall, or I'm far away here, I will play down the line, and maybe a bit higher, not so fast. Because then you get a high backhand volley, which is far more difficult to play than a low backhand volley. Yeah. Because it's just a matter of keeping the ball in play first. Yeah. Start the point. So if this player poaches a lot, 
play straight. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be hard. No. Because it's not a scoring ball, it's just starting the point. Yeah, that, I agree. And if you get a back end, you, you have... It's easy to play to this player. Yeah, yeah. I, I never play to that player if I'm on the back end because I leave my court open too much. Yeah. So I'm always playing towards you and then it can be soft at your feet or hard at the body. Depends on what kind of serve I'm, I'm getting. Yeah, I agree. Usually a first serve is just hard on the body. Yeah. And a second serve, I usually have more time. And then, uh, or it's a lot. Yeah. Or if it touches the, because sometimes uses, if I'm using the wall, then I got way more options because it's easier for me if I'm using the wall to take the ball with me, go short towards the fence and follow the ball. Yeah, so you have more options if you use the glass. If I can. Yeah, yeah depends so on the, the serve. surfer doesn't need to serve so fast because they are in trouble. Yeah. And so where would you play the lob, Miguel? A lob? Yeah. Uh, well, if it's a lob with the forehand, usually I go down the line. So this one? This one I will go down the line or towards the middle, yeah. either way. But because yeah, this player gets a high back end. A high back end. And it's with the back end the same. Same thing. I will not go cross court. I will just play it yeah, here. Yeah, because here I'm already there. Oh. So but with then, the back but end? Then, then still, if you're already there, it doesn't matter for me, for me personally. Yeah. Because I'm already there when you're hitting. So my defense is solid because of the lob. Yeah. Because I played the lob. I'm already here. Now you're hitting. So if I see the Vibora is good, I'll block it. Yeah. No pressure. Yeah? It's yeah, only rather good. than somebody that has a volley. Hmm? Better than a volley, yeah. Because yeah. with a four and volley, I'm, I'm gone. Yeah. I have no time to recover. So that's why with the lob, I have time to recover. Preferably on your back end or very deep. But if you can play the Vibora or the Bandeja, it doesn't bother me. No. Because I'm already there. Yeah. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for watching. Thank you, Miguel. You are welcome. And I see you all next Monday. Hasta luego. Ciao. Adios. Ciao, babies.